Well, I know you didn't see because everyone seems to be quite distracted right now, but President of the United States of America had to put out a public statement wishing a very happy birthday to the dear departed St. George Floyd. And of course, while he said goodbye, he also called for your disarmament, which is interesting because it was actually the response to the death of George Floyd that caused so many Americans to go buy guns. Interesting little racket we have going on right now. Joining me now, Vince Everett Ellison. He is the author of the new book, Crime Inc. What a name. And it's not about the mafia, even though it's mafia-like tactics. Vince, what are you talking about, Crime Inc.? Who, who's Crime Inc.? Oh, Jesse, thanks for having me. Uh, you know, I'm going to tell your, your viewers something a little bit about me. I was born on a cotton plantation in Haywood County, Tennessee. My father was a sharecropper. And uh, the most violent crime, uh, uh, Ku Klux Klan faction in America was in Tennessee. And the Grand Wizard lived in Brownsville, where I grew up. So I know about the, the Democrat Party because the Ku Klux Klan was their military wing, as you know. And they've tried to kill me and chase me my whole life. And I've known they were a criminal organization. My father aspired and bought us out of poverty uh, in, in the insurance industry. And I started working at a prison after college. And I saw that we had, we had not overcome. And uh, when I asked the black intelligentsia why all these young black men were being locked up, they said, oh, evil rich white Republicans hate black people. So I went down to the ghetto and started a nonprofit. And when I got there, I saw something very interesting. I saw no evil rich white Republicans anywhere. You see a leprechaun or a unicorn before you saw one. But what I did see were a lot of black Democrats making a lot of money out the chaos. And my first book was about them. I called them the Iron Triangle. Most black preachers, most black politicians, and most black civil rights workers. And they were conduits for the rich white liberals and the, and they lived in Manhattan and in LA and for the poor blacks that they needed them to vote for. So this Iron Triangle made black people vote for the Democratic Party by hook or by crook. I mean, they bribe them, intimidate them, you know, a, 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 a ballot harvesting, polls to, the, polls to the polls, you name it, they did it. And that was my first book. And Book Authority gave it like in the top 100 of one of the best political books of all time. Then I wrote 25 Lies. 25 of the Democratic Party, most damnable, seductive lies. And then I, now I've written Crime Inc. So your viewers can go to VinceEllison.com. That's VinceEllison.com. And they can view all of my books. But Crime Inc. explains how the Democratic Party is not just an evil institution. It's a criminal, criminal group. It's a criminal organization. They're no longer a, a cabal of ignorant, violent racists like they used to be before the 60s. Now the Marxists have jumped from the civil rights movement and they've jumped into the Democratic Party and they took it over in 1972. And they've turned it into the most sophisticated crime organization in the world. They make their money from hits, just like the mafia. Planned Parenthood kills babies for a living. They, uh, the Democratic Party gave them over $500 million last year to kill people. And then they get, make money from killing people and they give money to the Democratic Party. They, they groom children at an early age, just like the mafia and the triads and the crips and bloods. Same thing, except they use the public education system to do it. They traffic across the border. They and the cartels work hand in glove. They won't steal the border because they make money from the, from the K-Street lawyers that the cartels give money to, and, and, and these K-Street lawyers then give the Democratic Party campaign contributions. This is how Crime, Inc. is working. It tells the American people how the Democratic Party is a criminal organization, how they humiliate black people, how they demoralize people, how they beat people down, how they're an evil institution, a cabal of murderers, liars, psychopaths, and anti-Christian bigots, and how, why we got to run them out in 2024. How, explain this Marxist takeover of the civil rights movement, because you're a thousand percent right on this, and a lot of people don't realize that at all. They think, whenever you mention civil rights movement, for most Americans, they th they're thinking Martin Luther King Jr. and just fighting right. for equality, and obviously those things took place, but they don't realize that those dirty freaking Soviets got involved in that. They saw an opportunity and they dug in and they really, really thrived in spreading Marxism in America through the civil rights movement. Yes, they did. Yeah, the first chapter of my book um, com uh, explains how, like the mafia and the triads and MS-13, um, the day Soviet, the, the, today's Democratic Party has a foreign influence. It started over in a foreign country, started in the Soviet Union, actually. So just like the mafia started in Italy, the uh, MS-13 is from South America, uh, the, the triads of Asia. Today's Democratic Party is straight out of Moscow. I show how after the Montgomery bus boycott, Martin Luther King Jr. was actually recruited by Bayet Rustin, who was a communist. And he introduced him to Stanley Levinson, who was the number one communist in America. And Stanley Levinson bankrolled the whole civil rights movement and the SELC from Moscow. 
Matter of fact, he and Clarence Jones, two communists, wrote the I Have a Dream speech. In the I Have a Dream speech, Martin Luther King Jr. said something that I heard a thousand times, but this time I heard it in 2018. I heard this I Have a Dream speech, and I heard him say something that really rocked my world. He said, 100 years after the Emancipation Proclamation, the Negro is still not free. That was a lie. I was born free. My freedom is a gift from God. Thomas Jefferson said in the Declaration of Independence that we were born free, that our freedoms transcend the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence and law. It's a God-given thing to us. Martin Luther King Jr. said that it comes from government. That I Have a Dream speech turned the Declaration of Independence on his head. Five times in that speech, he said, we were not free. And in the refrain of it, at the end of it, he said, on some certain day, we'll be free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we're free at last. And we teach our children that speech, that we are not free here in America. When that is an absolute lie, because according to our Declaration of Independence, we were born free. Our freedom is irrevocable, non-transferable, and unsellable. So these guys in the Civil Rights Movement then jumped from the Civil Rights Movement to the Democrat Party in 1972. They took it over, and the Democratic Party became a Marxist organization ever since then. Yes, it did. Vince, I want people to go get this book, Crime, Inc., so you can truly understand what's going on. There is an organization behind all this chaos. It's not just random. Yes, Vince, thank you, sir. I appreciate you. It's my pleasure. Go to my website, VinceEllison.com. Get Crime, Inc.